Welcome back to Weld.com. Please hit the subscribe button. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. A while back we did a TIG welding video called TIG 101. We did it on carbon steel. Today we want to do one on aluminum. It's quite a bit different running on aluminum. We want to kind of do the same format. We want to go through machine settings, some variables, and there's a bunch of them, but we're going to keep it real simple. We want to go through all the correct ways to kind of run beads on aluminum and what happens and then we want to do the classic screw ups in that previous video we you know we kind of we joked around like we're trying hard these are going to come natural to me i can screw these up real easy so let's get started again don't be overwhelmed when you come over here and you look at this machine because there's a whole bunch of bells and whistles this is a multi-process machine but just like setting up on DC TIG for carbon steel, it's fairly easy to understand when you understand the functions of each of these things. So we're gonna identify them, tell you how to adjust them, describe what happens. And if you need any help with anything, please ask. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can help you out and get you going. The first thing we want to do here is we're gonna switch from DC to alternating current. The reason we use alternating current on aluminum is it helps break up the oxide layer. Yes, we're gonna clean it, but still, aluminum likes that alternating current. In alternating current welding on aluminum, we, we I just wanna focus on a couple of essential variables. So one of them is frequency. And on this machine, we've set it at 60 because 60 is like a, an old time transformer machine. That's just normal output. So I'm gonna set it at 60. Another one is balance. We've set this machine to 30%. It would be 30% electrode positive, 70% electrode negative. And that means during that sine wave cycle that 30% of the time the electron flow is up off of the material bombarding this oxide layer. 70% of the time the electron flow is off of the tungsten into the material. So there's your heat transfer. The next one is going to be amperage. And the last one that we're going to do is simply set the gas flow. Okay. Our machine is set. The next thing we need to talk about is material preparation. I have a piece of aluminum here that is untouched as it came in. All we did was shear it up. It looks clean. It's not. Here's what happens. The common methods of cleaning aluminum are kind of by hand. You don't want to use power tools and abrasives. I'm going to use a wire brush to start scratching on this. I want to show the difference of what this is going to do when I scratch on it a couple times. You'll notice that I scratched it in one direction only. I learned from a very knowledgeable gentleman, Mr. Travis Fielder. Go in one direction, otherwise you're kind of pressing that stuff and putting it down. The last thing you want to do is grab one of these on a power grinder and sink it down into here because it's going fast. All you're going to do is impregnate this oxide into the material. So we're going to clean this. So I'm scratching that in one direction. I want to wipe that off. For what we're doing, for what we're practicing, that will be plenty good. Next thing we need to do with all our proper settings and everything is run some beads and show you how this works. Hopefully we can lay down some good looking beads for you. We're gonna talk about the torch angle and the travel speed, what we're doing. Hopefully this will come out. So first thing I need to do, I haven't done this yet. I'm just gonna simply wipe this down a couple times. Grab my piece of clean material. Let's get started. Here's what I'm looking for when I strike the arc. I want my gun angle up here, about 10 to 15 degrees. I'm traveling this way. When I initiate the arc, I want the pool to form first. I want it to kind of flow out around the tungsten. When I see that melt, I want to introduce the filler wire down here at a low angle, about 10 or 15 degrees. And I want to transfer along, pushing wire. I don't want to take the wire out of the argon shield. I just want to kind of lead it on the, or dip it on the leading edge and push a little wire in, try to make my ripple pattern as smooth as possible. I want the travel speed to reflect the fact that the bead is consistent in width. If I jump forward too fast, my bead will get narrow. When I come to the end of the bead and I want to terminate the bead, I want to taper out of my amperage 
and add filler wire. I don't want to leave a crater in the in the end of the bead, especially out on the edge, which is very common with aluminum. If I just take out, just stop the amperage and terminate the arc, it kind of sucks a little BB hole in there and leaves a depression. We don't want to do that. So taper out slowly, add some filler wire and fill it in. So here's what happened. I ran two separate beads, but when I started out over here, the first thing I noticed was this, what we call a frost line. That is the effect of the alternating current. I saw the pool form and I started adding wire and I traveled along. It looks like I got a little, a little bit quick here and my bead narrowed down a little bit. And I came out here about uh, a little less than half of this and I stopped. I added a little wire and I came out of the amperage slowly. Uh, decent ripple pattern, fairly consistent width, it's not too high, and the edges are fused into the material. I stopped and I restarted a little bit away from that. Again, well, I got the puddle to form. I hit this one a little harder. I started with more amperage, formed the pool quicker, and then once I started dipping the wire, I released, I lessened the amperage, let off a little bit, saw where I liked it, and maintained that. Now, because aluminum dissipates heat about four times faster than carbon steel, I started decreasing my amperage about right here, but it made the same width as it came out. It looks a little flatter right in through here. Could have decreased it more, but I added some filler wire out here at the very edge and filled it in. I've got a little tiny depression out here, what we call fish eye or crater, commonly called a crater. Okay, so not bad for a couple of runs. You know, we're, we're practicing, we're getting better, hopefully. Now, let's show you some common mistakes. One of them is not waiting for the pool to form. Is we're just adding wire too quick. This is not to be confused with running the whole weld too cold because we're, you know, we're just gonna start too soon, not let the pool form but then as we go, we'll have a, a fairly decent bead. So this would be like cold start only. When I initiate the arc, I saw that it kind of formed. I saw my frost line. I thought I had a pool, but I didn't. And I went ahead and added wire. And it looked like it just balled up a little bit on the, on the leading edge of the pool, which we would call lack of fusion. And then as I transferred my torch angle for torch, further into the bead, the material actually heated up properly and I started running the proper bead. So that start is a problem. So as you can see, this is real cold. It's stacked up and crowned. It's got, uh, it's, I can't, you know, it, it looks like the, the edge is not wetted in. The toe of the weld is not wetted in for about the first three eighths of the weld. And then after that, it laid down and, and fused into the parent metal. The next mistake a lot of people make myself included sometimes, it depends on the position, is long arcing. Long arcing is we have our normal arc length and in aluminum we like to keep it about 3 sixteenths or so, eighth inch, strong eighth inch, so that as we add wire the weld pool crowns up a little bit. But if I long arc, now I'm way up here. I don't have any control of what the arc is going to do as far as forming the pool. I'm also probably going to see wire come off and melt, but not really go in and form a bead. That's kind of what I expect to see. Haven't done this one in a long time. I'm more of a too short of an arc, and we'll talk about that one in a minute. So let's see what happens here with long arcing. As you can see, I established the arc pool and I started adding some wire and I was going along okay for about the first inch, inch and a quarter. And I, it, what happened was we started long arcing here, I raised it up and it become uncontrollable. It appears I lost the argon shield because things got black, flattened out. It's like right out here where I terminated. My wire was going crazy and just melting off the end with the arc. And we actually made a an unfused aluminum turd here that was sitting on the plate. So that's not a good thing. Long arcing is not good. The next common mistake would be dipping. Now I should be really, really good at this one 
because as I mentioned before, uh, it's, it's real easy to do this and for a couple of reasons. As you add aluminum at the proper amperage and travel speed, you add aluminum and it kind of sinks a little bit, but it also, before it sinks, it crowns up. So you're adding wire and you're running along at normal arc length and the bead crowns up a little bit and that's where I'm running a little bit too close. So, you know, the difference between carbon steel and aluminum, you want to increase the arc just a little bit to allow for that. You do want a gentle crown. It, it just reacts different when you add filler wire. So, let's do some dipping. Well, I was doing one, minding my own business and running along here all nice and cool and frisky and uh, I hit this a couple of times, starting about right here. Dipped it a couple good times and you'll notice that there's a bunch of black. Classic mistake, dipping and then keeping right on going. It does contaminate the end of the tungsten. You do need to stop, break the end of the contaminated tungsten off. You do need to clean this area up. So it's real easy to do. <clears throat> and a lot of people just do what I did right there. Just keep right on going. Correctly, you need to stop, clean everything up and go at it again. So that is dipping the tungsten in the weld pool. Our next one is very common. I see this a lot, especially I'm going to say aluminum welding because I've seen it a lot on aluminum welding in MIG because it's real easy to terminate a MIG weld and just kind of come out of it. I see it a lot in, in TIG welding as well, especially out on edges. A while ago I, I said that aluminum dissipates heat four times faster than carbon steel. You reduce your amperage when you come out here on the edge. And I see a lot of people come out here on the edge and their bead is real, like real wide and flat and then they get out here and it's kind of like blown up and it's real easy to do. So we ran the correct bead where we added wire. This one will be just the opposite. We're going to come out to the edge, stay on the amperage and just blow it up. It's easy to do. I started out with a normal bead. I saw it established. I did it a couple times actually and running a normal bead, I didn't really let off the amperage anywhere and I was still trying to maintain the same filler wire until I got out here and then I kind of quit. Two things happened. I didn't add wire, I didn't taper my amperage and I, the bead got wider and I kind of sucked a nice little hole in here, a little crater. So <clears throat> that's not what we need to do. We need to get in the habit of tapering out the amperage and adding substantial amount of filler wire to kind of make this rounded off in the same height as the bead. Easy to do right out on the edge. Uh, aluminum has a metallurgical condition called hot shortness. It's real weak when it's hot so when that happens it just kind of sucks that crater in there. It makes a fissure or a, a fish eye crater. And under cyclical loading and vibration that little crack starts propagating all the way through a beautiful bead. You've seen it many a times on aluminum trailers. Aluminum trailers go down the road, they're vibrating. You, and, and that's why, and those are usually MIG welds, but it happens the same way on TIG. So that's a classic mistake. That is a classic mistake. The next common mistake is <clears throat> taking the filler wire out of the argon shield or not adding it quick enough. What happens is, I, you know, and I've done this a lot, I've created it today on a couple of things that we were doing here. You make these aluminum turds, they, uh, they come off the end of the wire because it becomes oxidized. It's melting because of the arc, but it's really not in a shield, disrupts, it comes black and gray, falls off, or you got a nice little whisker hanging off here. When that happens, we need to stop and cut this off and go back into a proper bead. If you add that into your bead, you just added a nice mass or a pool of oxidized aluminum and that is not cool. Okay, so let's create that condition. So we started out and I was trying to create this condition and it got too hot. This, this one actually kind of goes along with the long arc thing. And when I got going, it was a little bit difficult for me to to do it until I realized I need to increase my torch angle long arc just a little bit and be real slow with this coming in. And here's what happened to the end of the wire. 
Again, our bead is too wide, it looks weird to me. And definitely this end of the wire is not right. So we need to definitely cut this off, clean it up, and get going again. Uh, this is one of those common things that you just absolutely hate to see. So you do anything to avoid it and, you know, it's like snow skiing. We don't want to fall, so we do everything we can not to. And, but it happens. We've all seen it, you know. We start out doing this. That's how, that's how it happens. And we've shown you how to correct it or run correct beads, so another common mistake. The last one, actually the last two go together, too hot, too cold. I'm going to run a bead on some a little bit thinner material over here, just a normal bead. And you're going to think it's okay, but when we turn it over, we're going to probably find some melt through. What happened here is, you know, definitely too hot. I've actually cracked the weld up here uh, on the start and everything. I didn't notice that. I couldn't see it, but just blasted through, created a big old crater in here. Uh, you know, again, we're just way too hot. We have rearrange the surface on the back side here, melted through, and we have a nice crater on the back side. I haven't, I haven't done that one in a while. Um, so, you know, again, you can't blast it with that much amperage. Uh, it, you know, the aluminum is kind of weak when it's hot. So, and I was trying to travel fast and add wire fast, but I'm, I wasn't fast enough. So, classic common mistake. The next one that goes with it, just opposite, is too cold. I went ahead and turned the machine down to what I knew was too cold and that was 120 amps for this thickness of material. Trying to create a, a little caterpillar and I did. It is like crowned straight up on these edges over here. It's definitely a strange looking profile with the toes of the weld non-fused. I'm looking at the end of the weld here looking at me and I see a little daylight thing underneath it trying to get the profile to the camera guy over here. He's not gonna like it. It's a, it's a beauty. Again, you know, you want to weld, you, you're wanting this to fuse into the material. We get in a hurry. We think we've got a pool that's doing the right thing and flatten out and fusing into the parent metal and it's not. So when you see crowned up edges, sharp transfer, not cool, okay? Well, this concludes our video. I wanna encourage you to practice up. You can do this. You can do it better than me. You probably can't make the mistakes better than me because I've had years of practice. These are very common, but they're also, I wanna say they're easily done, but they're also easily overcome if you understand what's going on with these variables, what to look for. So, if we can help in any way, please let us know. Thanks for your subscription to weld.com. Please check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Classic blooper. Shut up, Mike. We're doing a video over here. I'm just, I'm just joking. Don't.